As we've seen, there are plenty of examples of metric spaces and different types of functions between them. Some particular functions from a metric space to itself actually always have fixed points. So for example, um, let's at least write down the definition of a fixed point. So a fixed point for any function from a set to itself is just an element of that set satisfying the condition that if I apply the function f to it, I get back where I started. So for example, we can look at the function cosine of x, which looks something like something like this, and it goes on periodically. A fixed point of this function, if I rewrote this in a slightly different manner and I said it's a point for which f of x equals the identity applied to x, what we're looking at is the set of points, the set of um, elements that are fixed under this function. In fact, there's um, sort of a diagrammatic way of thinking about what are fixed points, and you can define them in the following manner. If I take two functions from a set to itself, one of them is f and one of them is the identity x, then the set of fixed points is, let's call it, um, let's call it x subscript f. The set of fixed points is a set with a function into x satisfying a particular universal property. And that universal property says that for any other set, z with a map to x. Oh, by the way, I should have mentioned that not only um, that this map satisfies the condition that a function from here composed with f equals the function composed with the identity. That's, um, I should have been a little bit more clear about that. Um, similarly, so it satisfies the condition that for any other set with a function this way, such that this diagram commutes, then there exists a unique function from z to x such that this diagram commutes. Actually, um, I, I got to be honest with you, I just thought of this right now, so um, this may or may not be true, but it seems like it might be true. Uh, exercise. Check if really um, xf satisfying the universal properties that I just uh, claimed is indeed the set of fixed points of a particular function f. Um, whether or not that's true, It'll, it won't affect anything that follows. So let's look at the identity function. So let's just write this out. This is pi over 2. Um, and let's say pi over 2, let's say 1 is somewhere here. Or, well, no, 1 is, here's 1. And if I drew this somewhat to scale, then 1 should be approximately here. And this will help me draw the identity function, which is just the straight line through these two points. This is the identity function. And if you notice from this picture, there's exactly a unique fixed point. The fixed point is exactly where these two graphs intersect. So this is the point here is, um, let's call this x, let's just call it x. This is the point such that cosine of x equals x. And if I asked you to try to solve this explicitly, um, you might have some difficulty. Uh, for example, um, cosine can be written in terms of its uh, power series, but that's going to give me a huge list of, um, uh, a never-ending list of polynomials, a power series in x. So it's not difficult, it's not easy to solve for it. However, there is a nice approximate way of obtaining the solution. And anybody can. I mean anybody. All you have to do is guess a number, like this one, conveniently. Let's, let's choose the one that I, I wrote here. Guess some number, let's call it x naught, and then apply cosine to it. So if you apply cosine, that means you land somewhere here. 
and then that's your new value and you apply cosine again. So to calculate, um, so this is some value, let's say this is cosine of x naught. And because cosine goes from negative 1 to 1, we know, and we're only looking at this um, side here, we know that this is always going to be some non-negative number, and it's bounded by 1, so it's actually going to be in this um, domain again. So the way you visualize what its value is, is you just extrapolate to the identity, and that's exactly the x value of this function. So here, this point right now, is cosine of x naught. And make that your new starting point. Call this x1. And now apply cosine again. So let me draw that in another color. If you apply cosine again, you'll land again on this graph. This is cosine of x1. And then drop down again. So go to the identity, drop down and you're going to get you're going to land back on the um, horizontal axis. So this is cosine of x1 which is cosine of cosine of x0. And keep doing this over and over and over again. What's going to happen? So you move up, hit identity, and if you notice you're always getting closer and closer and closer to x. So here is um, x this was x2, right? So this is x3. And every time you do this, you oscillate between, back and forth, between the fixed point x. And so what you could hope for is maybe this sequence of numbers is actually converging to that fixed point. And indeed, that's the case. So a very important question to ask is, under what conditions on a function guarantee the existence of a fixed point? Furthermore, what additional assumptions are needed to guarantee that that fixed point is unique. And then it would be even better if we had a procedure to actually calculate for us what that fixed point is to whatever degree of accuracy we would need. One of the things that we notice about this function is that it satisfies the condition from this sequence of points um, that the distance between two successive points is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And because we're not sure what exactly our initial point is, we want to make sure that after applying the function, distance between successive points is decreasing. And the way we write that is that if y is the fixed point, I should have called it x, but let me, so if x, if x is the fixed point, then we notice that x minus xn plus 1 which is this from our successive approximation, is less than y, sorry, x minus xn. So the distance between successive approximations is getting closer and closer to that fixed point. And in fact, for the specific function that we have in mind, this is true for all points. So cosine y minus cosine, let me not use x because I've already used that for the fixed point, but um, cosine y minus cosine z is less than y minus z for all distinct y and z in R. So what we have is an example of a function that's distance decreasing. This was one of the examples of functions that we defined a little bit earlier. So you could ask, is having a distance decreasing function on a metric space sufficient to guarantee the existence of a fixed point? And it turns out the answer is no. Distance decreasing is not enough to guarantee a unique, I'll always write unique as an explanation point, fixed point. For example, the function that takes x, and let's say x is on the interval, on the open interval 1 to infinity, maps it to x plus 1 over x. And this function, you can show, satisfies this condition. 
So is distance decreasing? But no fixed point. And you might wonder, well, part of the reason is because um, the fixed point looks like it's actually approaching infinity. However, if I slightly modify this function and multiply by a factor that's strictly less than 1, but still greater than, uh, than 0, such as 25 over 26, this does have a fixed point. A unique fixed point. Why is that? Well, not only is this function distance decreasing, but it's actually also a contraction. So, you might ask, okay, is a contraction on a metric space sufficient to guarantee the existence of a unique fixed point? Turns out the answer is no. Again, contraction, not enough. But the reason for this is sort of um, a little bit obvious when you think about it for a second. Um, take, for example, the following uh, situation. It's going to be a very similar function here. Imagine that you just take um, a rational number and you send it to x over 2 plus 1 over x. Try to solve this equation for the fixed point. What do you get? Um, multiply both sides by x, you'll get x squared. Remember, this has to equal this. So x squared equals um, x squared over 2 plus 1. Solve for that. This implies x equals um, square root, plus or minus square root of 2, but let's say, let's focus on the positive side. So let's say um, um, set of rational numbers that are uh, greater than or equal to 1, for example. Then this um, gives us a root. And this, of course, is a fixed point, but it's not a rational number. So technically, um, there is no fixed point, even though it's a contraction, as you can check. And the problem here is a little bit obvious. It's because Q is not complete. Okay, fine. So we've gone through a bunch of examples that are uh, counterexamples to possible conjectures that we might make. Now let's try to make another one. Is it possible that every contraction on a complete metric space has a unique fixed point? And the answer to that question is yes. So every contraction on a complete metric space has a unique fixed point. And in fact, not only is this true, given any initial condition, any guess, you can think of this as a guess, the sequence given by starting out with that x0, applying f to it, applying f to it again, and, and just keep on applying f to it, you'll get a sequence of numbers. This sequence converges to that fixed point. And this method of using these conditions is called the method of successive approximations. And it's quite of interesting that um, such a method of approximating the solution to some sort of equation actually gives you an answer. Um, and in fact, we know that it converges. So it's a little bit surprising that um, uh, there are many surprises here. First of all, that given any initial condition, that sequence of applying that 
point always lands you at that, um, at that fixed point. And so what you could do is you can imagine having a metric space and it's after each iteration of the function, all of the points are sort of flowing towards some central point. So that almost sort of gives you a possible link between uh, certain kinds of vector fields, namely sinks, um, and if they satisfy a property like this. Uh, we'll see how those are related uh, a little bit later. After we go through the proof, of this theorem along with several other closely related ones.